Welcome to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And um, some of the recent videos we've been doing are about um, facial characteristics, rendering likeness, um, doing different pieces of the, the human form to kind of show you how to um, render those and how they're constructed and stuff. This one is kind of like not that talked about as much, but I think it's really, really important. It's one of those features that I look for in faces when I'm sitting down to render somebody. I call it the active versus the passive side of the face. Everybody has this. It's sometimes more exaggerated in some people versus others, but it's still a feature of everybody. And this is something that maybe you hadn't heard of before, but it's something that I look for whenever I sit down to do something. A lot of people make the mistake of when they're trying to render a face that they'll get one eye or one side of the face done, and then they basically turn off their brain and they stop looking at the actual shape that they're seeing and they just render a mirror image of what they just did on the other side. Never works out. Nobody's face is like that. Everybody's a little bit wonky. Everybody's got a little bit of flavor and that's fine. Um, but you need to understand how to convert what you're seeing onto the two dimensional plane. And I wanna show you uh, a few examples of what I mean when I'm talking about the active versus the passive side of the face. Everybody in the world has a side that is act more active looking um, where the features will actually be tilted up or higher or the corners of the mouth will turn up versus the other side, which will maybe have um, the eyelid that's a little bit lower or the corner of the mouth or something that's a little bit lower. So one will be more like happy and surprised and the other one will be a little bit more sleepy. Um, and so I was gonna show you today exactly what I'm talking about. So we have this image and yes, models and people in photos like this uh, are a lot of times very, very symmetrical. So some of these subtle differences that I'm showing you may be a little bit harder to pick up on but I think you'll get what I'm talking about. So we're gonna put this paper right here on her face and you're going to see that she's gorgeous. We get it, you know, good for her. But you can see that this side, she has a really strong shape right here where her eyebrow turns down. And then also her upper, upper lip has this really, really deep curve right here that makes it look kind of super pouty and stuff. And then you take the other side and you will see that the bridge of her eyebrow is really, really distinctly high on this, this side. The opening between um, her eyebrow ridge and the top of her eye is really, really wide. Comparatively, you will see that they are different. One is shorter, and then this one is much, much larger and broader uh, than this side. So. This, as far as my analysis would go, would say that this is the active side of her face. This is the passive side of her face um, because you have so many different components of what, what constitute her face, which are lower oriented on this side and then higher oriented on that side. And then she even, like if you notice here, like, the um, opening between her two eyelids is bigger on this side than that side. They're very, very subtle, small, small differences. They make a big difference in how you render people. Now, you have somebody who has a, a much more atypical looking face where the construction is a little different. The rule is still the same. So even though the features are a little bit more unconventional and stuff like that, that rule regarding the, the symmetry of it is still applies. Now, I don't know if any of you guys ever watch, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race or anything, but there are some sage <laughs> little pieces of information in there every once in a while. And, um, you know, because they're hyper analyzing, you know, facial features and then, you know, basically using their whole face like a palette and altering how uh, their their features are viewed. They're very, very like acutely aware of like how shapes read and stuff. And I remember 
one things that they said was, your eyebrows are sisters, honey. They're not twins. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind because people often make that mistake. They're like, oh, I got that one eyebrow in, let's make another one. And they don't, they don't look the same. They, they don't, they're not angled the same very often. There's like different uh, areas where the peak uh, occurs and stuff like that. So um, you had to keep all of those things in mind. So we'll look at this person's face. The interesting thing about this, she has a really, really strong cranial ridge on the outside edge. Uh, normally you're, you would have some kind of a peak here and then here, but hers is way, way out on the edge here, which is what creates this unusual shadow shape um, around the, the curve of her eye. But you look at here, there's not a really, really strong indicator for like how this is gonna read versus the other side. And then until you start to kind of look at it and then you see that this eye, this sweep that comes up right here is much stronger. If you cut across her pupils here, you'll see that this eyebrow is higher than this one. This eyelid is higher than this one. There's a bunch of interesting things about here. Her nose is almost like perfectly symmetrical. And also her mouth is, uh, the corner of her mouth is actually higher on that side. So this is what I would label and work from as the active side. And this one is what I would label as the passive side for this particular example. And you're like, yeah, yeah, Julie, bunch of women, whatever. Okay, so this is a familiar face that many of you might know, Mr. Chalamet. He is a very symmetrical human being. So this one is going to be a little bit more subtle. Now, granted, he has these kind of like really, really curvy eye, upper eyelids, and it, accentu it accentuates the fact that his eyelashes are really kind of, they're tilted down um, and they don't have much curve to them. So it creates these interesting shadow shapes that come down off the quarter, corners of his eyes. But you'll notice that even with that like really pronounced jawline here, that the way that this curves off is slightly lower than this side. So like if you were to lay it down versus the corners of his mouth, you can see that this, this curve here starts lower on the jaw than it does on that side. And that um, he actually has quite a bit of where the brow is close very very close to the the top of his his eye crease here and right actually dead on it on this side and then also his if you line up the edge of his nose this this ear is closer than on this side so they're subtle subtle little teeny differences i would say actually that he kind of he kind of is is, is a funny mix there's active parts like higher parts on one side and then there's also passive sides but i would say that largely this side to me says passive and this side says to me more active but that's for you to decide uh, what does it look like to you all of these are examples that like that's how i would break down a face it's more than just the structure it's those little 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 teeny bits that maybe you hadn't noticed um in there that kind of denote um, they connote emotion um, and the, uh, the feel of the way that that person is feeling um, and a lot of different things. So take a look at the active versus the passive side of a face when you are rendering for portraiture and hope that you enjoy.